Welcome to my latest module video. This time I'm continuing with the Erica Fusion Ranger tube modules and this video is for the tube VCA. You can see the other modules in the range on my YouTube channel including the low pass filter, mixer, delay and chorus and soon I'll have a video for the ring modulator as well. All the Fusion Ranger have are early prototypes with the final versions coming out soon so bear that in mind and there'll be some subtle differences with the layout changes on the panels and we're also going to get inverted outputs. So we'll start by looking at the sound of the tube VCA. CV level 1 here is an offset and bias when no CV is present at CV1's input. And we've got an input level which is the input to the tube. I've got a sine wave here and I'll just turn up both of those. As you can hear it's not much of a sine wave with a full input level. We can get something nice and warm and quite subtle when that's backed off up to more full on tube drive near a full level. CV1 level working as a bias knob is post input so you can set the tone with the input level and then modulate the output volume with the CVs and the offset on CV1. Moving on from a sign, here's a triangle wave. And then a saw wave. You can hear that changing the waveform more so at the higher input levels. Here's the sound with some moving waves, which is the alien source from a live wire AFG, and we can really drive and saturate that to create a really sort of thick moving waveform. So we'll look at the CV response of the unit now. There's nothing in CV input 1, so that knob acts as an offset. Turning the VC up, I've got a sample and hold sequence running into a VCO, which is sending a sine wave into the tube VCA. And as before, we can drive that sine with a tube. Adding an envelope into CV1, the CV1 knob then becomes a CV attenuator. And I'll play with the envelope settings to show how tight the response from the VCA is. So the response is really fast and I've got a nice fast envelope here which is a WMD MME. There's some really great tight clicks and it reacts really well. Leaving the envelope there, I'm going to add a sine wave LFO, which is an IntelliGel Dixit, and that's going into the CV input 2. And turning up the LFO rate, we get audio rate AM modulation on the VCA. So here's another patch showing the sound and the CV response of the unit. Here I've got waves mixed from a VCO going into the VCA's input and an envelope going into CV2 and there's no input at CV1 so that's going to act as an offset. The signal level is at half so that's just a nice warming of the signal and not the sort of more full on tube drive that's more apparent at higher signal levels. Turning up the input level you can hear the drive and clipping. And then tightening up the envelope which is on CV input 2 and moving the CV1 knob we get some offset against that CV input on 2. Adding a second CV to CV input 1 now that gets rid of the offset and acts as an attenuator for the CV1's input and this is a slow wavetable LFO from an E350. And at higher rates this particular wavetable gives some really nice sort of glitchy audio rate movement. Here we'll look at saturating and modulating effect signals. I've got a dry percussive sound in the background and a delay set up as a send which is the input to the VCA. This then mixes with a dry signal in a separate mixer before going to my output.
Using the VCA we can drive and clip the delay signal. Here's a tighter delay with more feedback. And adding the touch controller input to CV1 and then modulate the volume from the touch plate or any other controller. Changing the CV input to an envelope now, we can set nice long feedback on the delay and use the VCA to control the volume of the delay's feedback sound. Full input gain gives a really heavily driven and more glitchy sound. And turning up the attack on the envelope, we get the initial sound hitting before the delay then fades in. Sticking with effect sounds, I've got a percussive patch going again and a mull of the original sound, the dry sound, is going into a spring reverb with the output of the spring reverb going into the tube VCA. CV1 again is an offset and the input level is the input to the tube so that defines how much we clip and drive the output of that spring reverb with the tube. It can go from clean right through to a lot of grit. Plugging an LFO signal into CV2, we can get some nicely moving reverb sounds and the offset will bring that up more as well. And changing the LFO rate now, you can hear it pulse against the dry signal faster. Moving on from effects, here's the VCA crunching up some drum sounds. I've got a loop playing out of a Korg Volker beat, which is already a bit low fi and sort of rough and ready. And turning up the input level, we can really drive that on the tube VCA. Adding an LFO to CV input 2, we can get some nice volume modulation. Using noise as the waveform on the LFO, you can hear it adding a dry, sort of dirty rumble to the sound. Here I've got a bass guitar going into a dope for A119 input module, and then that's taking the level up from a bass guitar up to modular level signals, and then that's going into the VCA, and then straight out into my sound card. So the tube in the VCA responds really well to dynamics on live instruments and it starts warm and much cleaner and then gets much more fuzzy and louder as the playing dynamics increase. Turning up the signal level even further, we get some really nice sort of full-on tube breakup and really fuzzy drive at the top end of the plane. And now I'm going to use an envelope follower into CV input 2 and an LFO which is also taking that envelope follower to the rate of the LFO to create some modulation on the VCA as well as a sort of initial fuzz on that signal. So the last thing I'm going to look at is using the VCA with CV signals as the input instead of audio. You can hear a triangle wave from an oscillator at the minute and the output of the VCA is going to the FM input of that triangle wave's oscillator. I have an LFO at the VCA's input and turning that up you can hear that passing through as you'd expect. With the signal level up full, we can clip CV signals just like we have been doing audio and it turns that sine wave LFO into something much more square-like. Between 
between the input level and using CV1 as an offset, there's a range of potential modulation. Adding in some modulation to this VCA now using CV input 2, we can modulate the VCA's level with a second LFO. The rate of the original input LFO is staying the same here and I'll adjust the bias on the VCA using the CV1 knob and adjust the rate of the LFO going into CV2's input. So there's plenty of options for using the tube VCA to modulate CV signals. I've kept it to the oscillators FM here so it's really obvious what's happening but it could go to filters, wave folders, other signal manglers, pulse width modulation or any other source that you can think of. So as always I hope you've liked this video, the tube VCA sounds great and tonally it's very different from any other modules that I have in my setup. Using it as a CV shaper was a bit of a surprising addition as I didn't expect that, I was just thinking of audio when I saw the tube in the VCA. Check out the rest of the Erica Sims Fusion range on my YouTube channel and subscribe, like and comment for more videos coming each week.